Hello fellow 3D printers, I'm Jay Wall Print That Thing and today we are going to be reviewing my first 3D printer which happens to be a resin printer. It's the XYZ Printing Nobel 1.0A or Advanced. So this video is just going to show my process from 3D design to 3D printing to post processes with the SLA printer. So let's get started. All right, so finally figured out how to get this freaking printer to start. Seems like they sent me the wrong hood. Uh, looks better, but uh, this hood here is for the Noble 1.0, not the Noble 1.0 Advanced. I know first world problems, but beginning to get a little frustrated with the printer. So I finally figured out there's a little sensor, or like little pressure sensor in the back. So. I got the hood to finally squeeze in there and push the trigger on the back left corner and it seems to be starting to print. All in all, hopefully this printer prints uh, incredible. I think everybody's gone through that where they want to throw a printer through the window. But yeah, we'll see how it prints. I feel like this style of printing will be very useful in filmmaking, cosplay, you know, any high detail of fashion, accessories, rings any type of jewelry, glasses, I think really fine, tight, amazing, detailed objects. Once they get the strength up a little bit, it's gonna be very, very popular. All right, let's take it off. So it looks like it printed a little bit and then kind of lost grip. We'll try it again. All right, so first layer on the first print didn't stick, but we'll just try it again. I'm gonna try a different method. Hopefully this will work. It doesn't look like it's sticking, so maybe we'll have to adjust the build plate up or down. All right, it's been almost a full day, maybe 12 hours. All right, so couldn't get it to stick to the build platform. I put in some more goo or resin, but that didn't help. So I'm gonna try and pour it all back out with these gloves on and then recalibrate the horizontal plane, I guess, and then uh, refill the tank. Uh, maybe reset it to default. I don't know. I'm just trying to get it to stick to the platform. It seems very difficult to do, uh, but we'll just keep trying, right? <laughs> the reason why I even care about SLA printing is just because I'm a designer. You know, I'm more interested in the, the softwares and the design aspect of 3D printing and what you can do with that. And printing in SLA is with the Noble 1.0 Advanced is whatever you put on the computer, it's going to pretty much look exactly like that. And I used to be scared of more, you know, the, the support materials, like messing up everything. But this, they almost just flake off. I also wanted to share some tips and tricks for designing for SLA. So this is a solid model. This is a model we did in VR with Stuart. But I'm just going to hollow it out by taking it in a mesh mixer, selecting hollow, generating some holes, and accepting. And if I turn the print bed off so you can see the bottom, you can see we got these little holes where the goo can run out and that's just going to cut the price and the material in half when going to print this guy. So I'm bringing him back into the XYZ printing software. You can scale them down with this little scale option. And now I'm going to build some custom supports with auto feature. Uh, we could use the large. That's usually the best results, but let's try mid or medium. And you can lift it off the bed, which helps, but I flattened this tail out. Um, there also is inner support if you need that and then generate and then it does a pretty good job at generating support you can uh, it is kind of buggy sometimes you can see this is blanked out so I just switched it to the old printer and then switch it back to the one advanced and now it comes back um, just so it's little things you can add a brim that's like a raft we're gonna do it at good quality and send it to the printer if you want to do pricing looks like it's a uh, about what 14 something grams so if you do the price of the jug of resin $135 times 14 grams that's roughly a dollar 89 so not too expensive uh, for this print and let it go I think it's a messier process for than what we're used to as FDM printers but there is definitely a payback and once you get kind of your flow down it's really not that bad it's just you just got your little groove down and you just you know wash it clean it the uh, hand messed up a little bit here but this one came out perfect Go off so i think what happened is maybe it lost grip
Yeah, you can see the bubble right there. You can look at the feet. It's kind of mushy. It's like a bugger. I'm gonna dip it again. So I, I strongly recommend everybody trying SLA or getting uh, to work with it because it's really fun to do uh, if you like a little messy work. <laughs> It's a very solid, well-built machine and does its job. I mean, you hit the button and walk away and it does it. So that's pretty, I couldn't say that about my FDM printer here. If you have that kind of money, then go ahead. I'd say buy it for quality. Uh, if not, if you're trying to, you know, you're just trying to go for strength or for multi colors and material options, then I would stick with FDM. If you're going for design, you know, high end selling something quality, uh, I would definitely look at SLA uh, printing. I made a list of pros and cons just for like working with this printer for about two weeks. So pros, uh, it's incredible quality. If I haven't said that enough, the support materials are you could just flick them off. Like once the alcohol gets them soft, you just It's very, very quiet compared to an FDM printer. <laughs> if you're worried about cat hair or dog hair, don't worry. I have two dogs and a cat that just shed like crazy and had no issues with too many hairs getting in the resin tank. I d you know, you'd get like one or two and you just kind of like scoop it out. It wasn't too intense and it just kept the, the hood on. The printer connects to the computer and the software very easily. I was using it on a Mac with just the USB and just every, it was just connected. I leveled this thing one time when I first got it. I just went <laughs> tighten four little screws, done. And then every, from then on, since two weeks, I've just printed. I've taken the, the bed off, you know, put it back on, take it off, put it back on. And every time it's just straight. Amazing texture, just the way that it feels, it's like this, really rough kind of rubbery but mm, i don't know how to explain it but it's just got an amazing futuristic texture feeling to it and so i i really really like that about this type of printing another plus is that it doesn't get hot so i'm not really worried that it's gonna like, catch on fire when i'm asleep or anything or like screw up the worst thing is i'll just have a blob of resin that was cured by light all right, and now we have the cons. This is a very sticky printing process. It's like if you're printing with, if all of your FDM had like syrup all over it. I'm a software freak, so the software to me was pretty clunky. It worked and it did its job. It's just like one of those basic programs, you know, for like beginner level printer slicers. It was what it was. Uh, it is also proprietary, so you're not gonna be able to use other softwares but uh, overall it worked. It built custom supports and sent the job to the printer. So it did its job. Uh, another, my last con is that it doesn't seem that there's a lot of different types of colors or material options, but you do have clears, you know, a few basic colors, um, castable resins, which is amazing at that high detail and flexibles which i want to play with next thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed it hope you all get a chance to touch play buy a resin 3d printer hopefully it's a noble 1.0 advanced and that uh, it gives you uh, all the joys of the world but anyways talk to y'all later peace